Guess who turns 44 today? Yes, it is me. It is I. Hey guys, Dacia Denise here. I decided to do the Naked Goth Tag by the Kilted Goth on my birthday since we all are born naked. What perfect time for me to shit off the gothic skin and just show you me. So the Kilted Goth started this tag, the Naked Goth, and I think it's just brilliant. It's basically, what makes you goth? The challenge is, no goth clothing, no jewelry. If you have wackadoodle hair that screams goth, weird, or alternative, cover it up with a hat. If you have piercings that you can remove, remove those. The idea is, since a lot of goths, including me, like to preach that it's all about the music, the clothes don't matter, which I still agree with. It's time to put my money where my mouth is. It's time to walk my talk. So before we get started, I have to show you my non-goth outfit of the day. First, look at this face. Not a stitch of makeup. Okay, that's enough for now. Next, my glasses, um, because I am blind as a bat and y'all do not want to see me squint. It is not cute. Third, my piercings or lack thereof. Uh, you do see my septum ring and a couple of my earrings, uh, and that's because they have ball bearings, and whenever I've tried to put them back in, it's been unsuccessful, and I've had to go back to my piercer to get them put back in. So those are going to stay in, but the rest of my jewelry, including my ear cuff that I usually wear, I have taken those out. Next is a lovely aqua blue t-shirt, which I like to wear when I practice my belly dance. In fact, this is a belly dance shirt. The only colors I really have in my closet is stuff I wear for dance practice and for performances. Next, it may look black, but this is a gray sweater, D, oh, <laughs> D for Dacia Denise. And I have to wear this because it's cold and I don't want to run my heater because I just don't. It can get distracting. Next, we have these lovely harem pants that y'all might have remembered from one of my haul videos. So, yeah. Nice bright teal color. And last but not least, these aren't gothic at all, but I've been looking for these for a few years now, and I finally found them on eBay. So I'm going to show you. On my feet. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. White socks. In fact, I only have probably two or three pairs because they're just hard to find. So I was glad to find a pair of white socks. So on with the tag. What makes me goth? Good question. The idea with this tag is to really go deep and to think about what makes you goth without the outside signs like clothing and jewelry and hair. What makes you goth without relying on outward appearance? So what makes me, Dacia Denise, goth? I really had to think about this. I came up with three things and I'm sure I'm missing so much more. Uh, but for brevity, I will stick with three. The first thing that I think makes me goth is I am just a naturally creative person. I've been drawing since the age of five, uh, possibly before that, but that's the age I remember. And I've taken a break from drawing for now, which kind of makes me sad. But I've been drawing and I've taken up music and I love music and... I just, I've always been creative. I am sure there are goths who aren't creative, and of course, not all creative people are goths, but me personally, I have never met a goth that wasn't creative elsewhere. Whether they draw, or they perform music, or write music, or create films, or what have you, I have never met a goth, and I've met quite a number of them in different age ranges, I've never met a goth that is not creative. Number two, I am an open-minded person, or at least I try to be. 
I believe in inclusion and diversity. It doesn't have to be forced. I'm not talking about uh, forced diversity, but I think that's just the reality of our world. We don't all look the same, and despite what some people may think, not all goths look the same either. Even though I was raised pretty close-minded, and I'll tell you, a big part of that is my religion that I grew up in, even the rules and regulations that my church had, even as a child, I thought some of them were ridiculous. I am a big believer that if you're not hurting yourself or you're not hurting anyone else, uh, go for it. Life is too short. I'm not put off with people who are overweight or too skinny or who are very fair skin, very dark skin. This is just the reality of humanity. As fabulous as I look, <laughs> normally, if everyone looked like me in the world, it would be a pretty boring place in my opinion. I think being open-minded is a big part of what drew me into this subculture. There are a lot of places that are not inclusive and they are not open-minded as far as there's these strict rules and if you don't buy by them, then you're just less of a person, and I, I can't get down with that. The third one that makes me goth, for me personally, is my love of forensics and the human body and how what we go through when we die, uh, what happens when we get diseases, that type of thing. Everybody who's into forensic science or into the human body they are not goths. I'm, that's not a reality at all. And not all goths are into that either. However, I got into it not because of goth, but because of my mom. My mom was a registered nurse, and she's been, before her passing, she's been a nurse for over 30 years. She's worked in many different departments, but her main department, uh, where she worked for many years before she died, was the cardiac unit, CCU. When she graduated college with her bachelor's of science in nursing, it was 1983 and I was 10 years old, so I do remember that quite fondly. I went to her graduation and it was exciting because uh, she was working and going to school at the time and she was a single mom, so she was busy and she was tired. So even though she still worked hard and took care of my sister and I on her own, it was nice that she finally at least got done with her schooling and had a little bit more time that we can spend as a family. So that was exciting. Part of her study as a nurse, she had all these books of the human body and diseases. And I remember as a child looking through this thick purple book and it had all these photographs and drawings, both in color and in black and white. And they showcased diseases that I didn't even know exist. I've never seen this on any documentaries or anything, but these were real people suffering from these conditions. And I remember as a child, I was horrified but fascinated at the same time. I was fascinated with my mom's work stories and things she had to do and conditions uh, her patients would have. How just one little cell, if that's off kilter, the whole body would shut down and I found that scary and fascinating at the same time but also fascinated me because our bodies are always constantly trying to heal itself things go wrong you know you got white blood cells rushing to the scene and you've got blood trying to clot so you don't bleed out uh, just little things like that all of us go through that we don't even think about uh, so that would be my third one that I think led me to my love of darkness and the macabre. I do love this challenge. It forced me to really think about why I'm goth in the first place. And I think it would help baby bats or anyone getting into the subculture to remind them that even though what you see, the makeup and the jewelry and the beautiful clothing, that's not all that it's to it. In fact, that's really a minor part of the subculture. It is a music subculture, and all of us goths are connected by the music. Not the fashion, but the music. I have a confession to make. When I was thinking about doing this video, I really thought I had this in the bag, you know? I have videos where I don't have a stitch of makeup on, and it's not a problem. 
I show videos in my practice gear. Maybe not on YouTube, but I have posted it on Facebook with us practicing belly dance. And, you know, I have the colorful clothes and no makeup. It didn't bother me. So I really thought I had this challenge in the bag. Then the kilted goth says to cover your hair if it's different. And I was like, okay, no big deal. I'll just wear a hat or something. So I decided to wear my headscarf. <laughs> I didn't realize how uncomfortable it made me to show the whole world what I look like with a headscarf on. If I had makeup on and a headscarf, cool. If I had no makeup on and had my dreads coming out, that would be cool too. But neither one? Oh. Ah. I do wear this headscarf, but I wear it to bed. It's to protect my dreadlocks, really. No one ever sees this. I don't even go to the store, even really go get the mail or anything with a headscarf on. Uh, no. So I was a little nervous posting this video with my headscarf on, not showing my dreads. And it reminded me how attached to my hair I am. Uh, I was attached to it when I had my afro, and I'm definitely attached to them now that I have my dreadlocks. And to cover them and not show anything goth at all, it's a challenge. So that's it guys. This is me naked. I encourage all of you goths to take the naked goth challenge. Even if you don't make videos, that's fine. Just at least reflect on why you're goth in the first place. I think it's very important, especially those of us who really believe that it has nothing to do with the clothes or the jewelry or your outer appearance that makes you goth. But what does make you goth? Ah, that's the question. And, you know, if I'm going to be preaching that to people, uh, I better really think about what makes me goth. So again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Questions, thoughts, concerns, share in the comments below. I'm going to leave the link to the Naked Goth by the Kilted Goth. And uh, I encourage you to take a look at that video and his other videos. So that's it. Until next time, TTFN Love and Shimmies. Y'all have a good one.